nope, this doesn't fit anymore. How did this fit on my head? Oh. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Voila, in view, a humble vaudevillian veteran, cast vicariously as both victim and villain by the vicissitudes of fate. This visage, no mere veneer of vanity, is the vestige of a vox populi now vacant and vanished. However, this valorous visitation of a bygone vexation stands vivified, and has vowed to vanquish these vilain and vermin vermin, vanguarding vice, and vowed saving the violent, voracious, and voracious violation of Alicia! The only verdict is vengeance, a vendetta held as a votive, not in vain, for the value and veracity of such shall one day vindicate the vigilant and the virtuous. And would you believe that I did that monologue when I was in grade 11 high school, and I have not forgotten it since. When you have to try and remember that many words with V, it's not even you're actually remembering what you're saying, you just remember the pattern of how you're saying it. This is my review for V for Vendetta, one of my all-time favorite films, a film that in fact I didn't shut up about about in high school. I was that annoying kid who kept on suggesting this. Hey, you guys gotta watch this movie. Hey, you gotta watch this movie. And the fact that I haven't talked about this and so many November the 5th have passed, it's about time that I finally talked about it. Because as much as I love this movie and as good as it is and as well as it is aged, there are some issues with it. The film follows a terrorist or a freedom fighter named V who is slowly starting to decentralize and break apart the totalitarian British government in this kind of alternate future which in terms of the government has complete control. Adam Sutler played by John Hurt is this alternate Hitler sort of character. The rest of the world is pretty much in complete disarray and everyone just obediently follows the government. And then there's Evie who is saved by V from some shady government folk and she gets pulled into his world, pulled into this reality that the government is in fact possibly not as truthful as they say. And at the time I remember watching this film and thinking, you know what, this is pretty horrible but I can't imagine that things would be happening right now and then you look at what's happening in freaking China right now and you're like, oh god. But really this film isn't far off the mark. It's essentially Alan Moore's interpretation, his own visual uh, idea of what 1984 was. And while the comic is definitely not as dramatic and as eccentric as this film is, the themes of the both the book and the film are pretty well followed. And in fact, I would say that this is actually the best Alan Moore comic interpretation into a film. And that's including Watchmen from Hell, definitely better than League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but I feel that this film really captured all of the key elements from the comic, and that's because it was written by the Wachowskis. And obviously the Wachowskis have a very, very interesting history as well as present, and I feel that their tribulations, their own conflicts really resonate in this film in the script and this is all carried by Hugo Weaving's portrayal of the character while we never see this guy's face we get his character through his movements and particularly through his voice and his character I feel that this was definitely the better choice in terms of actors because originally it was supposed to be James Prufiro or whatever and that guy is an interesting actor I don't know if he would have done this role as well. Apparently there are certain scenes that Hugo and James can see and they're like, no, that's not me, that's James, or no, that's not me, that's Hugo, because they had already filmed a few scenes with James already, and they kept those in the film. I do like Natalie Portman in this film as well, even if her accent's a little bit cringy in certain sections, her portrayal as the everyday person slowly breaking out of this hold that the government has put her in and finding her own freedom, her own life force was really cool to watch. The part where she's in the internment camp and she's being fed the letters is a fantastic part of the film, but there is one issue with this film and it's the director. Now James McTeague isn't a bad director per se, but he had a lot of things already in the bag for him when he got the directing job. He already had a great cast, he already had a fantastic script which was already based on a fantastic source material. He essentially had to just do his own crap to try and screw it up. And that is probably where the film does falter in certain aspects because this film is not exactly the most genuine or unique in terms of how it portrays itself. Now this obviously could be kind of accounted to the DOP, but the shots in this film are not exactly 
revolutionary. And not saying that they should be, but there's really no artistic flavor to it. It's all pretty standard. Certain shots are great, particularly with all of the dominoes, but that was a very, very complicated setup that took three days to set up all of those dominoes and they only had like one shot to do it because it was so expensive to get all the dominoes and apparently they had professional domino people like set it up but i really feel that the film is lacking this edge that it needs to push it above itself it doesn't have a raw flavor to it it doesn't have anything other than this is the story this is the script this is what's happening I would have just liked a little bit more of his own kind of interpretation into the story rather than him just be like, okay, yeah, he, he seems to be following the notes. Sure, there are certain directors who like visual over storytelling, and thankfully that doesn't happen in this film, but there's just not a lot of a visual element, except for maybe the fight scene at the end of the film. Otherwise, though, that's my really only complaint with the film. I love the story. I love how reminiscent it is now to today because when I watched this film when I was 15 I loved it I loved the idea of it of overthrowing a fascist regime regime government but I never really thought that it could become a reality I kind of was just a little bit in the clouds and obviously with how things are going on now and I'm not just talking about the United States I'm literally talking about the world in general this reality is slowly becoming more and more of a possibility and it's quite frightening to think of that Otherwise, I love the story, I love the characters, the source material, and just everything that is talked about in this film is so well done. Dialogue is fantastic. Again, very, very well written script. You're on the edge of your seat the entire time as you're figuring out more and more about the government's lies, V's history, and watching Evie take this all in and mold herself into this new being. The film doesn't lack that visual uniqueness to it, but in the end, it's still one of my favorite films of all time. I might have overblown it a bit as a kid. For instance, um, this was a cowboy hat. I turned into a V hat. I don't know why I don't have the mask or anything, but I had a full-on costume that I wore for years and years and years. And I don't know how this used to fit my giant melon. I, I don't know how. I probably have a ring in my head now because of it. But in the end, I'm going to give V for Vendetta a 6 out of 7. I love this movie. It's a film that you should watch. And it's aged pretty well considering it's 15 years old. But in the end, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot, and I hope you guys also have a good 5th of November. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.